Welcome to Fast Cars, Fast Girls. We are your IndyCar experience. Well, Molly? Yes? Let's kick it off. Okay. It's season three, episode 26. Episode 26. Moving right along. Uh, not quite halfway, because we had, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Eh, who knows? I don't know where we are. I don't know how many we'll have this year. Yeah, we'll see. So, We've got some bonus episodes. It, yeah, it's a surprise to everyone, us included. Uh, us included, but it's the uh, the Pocono preview episode with uh, just a scotch of news as far as warming up the tires. Oh, oh, my phone is slipping. Sorry, that was on me. No so, yeah, just um, you know, there was just just a scotch of news this week, so I figured we'd spend some time on that. Yep. And then just jump right on into Pocono slash the ABC Supply 500. Let's do it. So, the exciting but more minor of the news that came out <laughs> is that Connor yes. Daly will be driving at Laguna Seca with Andretti Autosport in the Air Force car. So, that's awesome. And uh, the video is nice. Um, it's nice. There's a little video where like they like the prank called them pretending to be fans. So, it's nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a nice little video. I enjoyed that. Yeah. yeah. I was like, aw. Like, got him. <laughs> So, um, good for him. I'm assuming that means he will not be the second Carlin car at Pocono, though, so. Well, yeah, we haven't heard anything about that. No, as of today, the spotter's guide for Pocono is not up yet. Or, like, the entrant list. Gotcha. Well, he could yeah. still, because, I mean, I think it's, yeah, because Charlie's driving. Yeah, it's Charlie, and then... Someone? Yeah. Maybe, well, I can't imagine they're going to have R.C. Anderson again, but they might. They might. I could see Sage if he could put the money together, because this is tech, this is like his home track. So. Oh, yeah. That would actually be great if Sage comes. I thought so. Well, we'll yeah. see. Yeah, as cool. of today, as of, as of recording, yes. we don't know. We do not know. All right, and then the big news. Oh, my God. Shit popped off, and I just want to publicly say thank you to everyone involved for not dropping this news the day that our episode drops. Or just like the day after we record, because we're not re-recording. No, we're not. That's 100% never happening. Um, Unless for some reason we completely lost the recording and there was no recovering it. That would be the only thing. But if we've already recorded an episode, we're not going to re-record it, because first off, we're funnier off the cuff. Everybody, we got shit yeah. to do. We got shit to do. We got lives. You know. So, yeah, thank you to everybody for dropping this news. Also, on a Friday morning. Yes. I was so here weird, for that. A weird day to, like, drop good, like, big news. Because, you know, it's kind of one of those, like, slow news days. And they were, like, yeah. surprised. It's great. I love it. I'm excited to see, uh, yeah, what happens the rest of this week, actually. But... Yeah, so anyway, back to the real news. Which, I'll tell you what, it was <laughs> it was challenging uh, because 8 o'clock is one of the busiest times of my day as a nurse. Mm. And so it was quite challenging to be on, on the internet, uh, on, on Twitter, everywhere, as much as I wanted to. Because and it was just a busy time of day. So I, I hid out in, in the bedroom for a little bit. Somebody walked in, they're like, are you in line? And I was like, no, I'm just hiding. Um, You're like, like, shit's popping off. Like I've got I a few need texts. To read one article. Right. I'm like I've got a few texts I need to respond to. Uh, I've got a few tweets I need to respond to. I just want to. Then I will go right back to keeping people alive. I promise. Uh, kind of a big deal. Oh, so. So yeah, so McLaren and Arrow. So in 2020, Arrow McLaren Racing SP. Which. Which the, it makes them AMR. We already have the AMR safety team, so it's just AMRSP. There, it's too many letters. Look, I need everybody to shorten their team names. Oh. Okay. This one, the, I still, the Andretti Autosport with Curb, Amadeja, Amadeja, that's how you pronounce it, and Marco Andretti and Herda Autosport one. That also is too long. Oh, it's entirely too long. It's like Mahaka, the, that's, if you say the initials of that one, this one is AMRSP. 
Yeah. Which is not standard petroleum. Um, Schmidt Peterson. Yeah. Which I'll tell you what, if I was Schmidt or Peterson, I'd be upset about the fact that it, I just had initial. I'm thinking typically they list out who's putting the most money up front. Well, yeah. Yeah. So I'm mean, thinking Arrow is putting out a lot of money, then McLaren, then SP. Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. I get why it is the way that it is. It just, it just looks dumb. It, well, it should be Arrow McLaren SP racing. Like, yes. The racing means it's over with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Racing means there are no more names. Oh, just kidding. Two initials. Oh. Uh, JK, we're not done yet. JK I didn't know SP. We, I didn't know if we would be spending 20 minutes pitching about this name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, become, like our main sticking point. We're like, also the name is stupid. The name is you're stupid. Well, and I really, we really haven't talked about that um, yet. We haven't talked about no. it with each other, uh, but it's been annoying me since the news dropped. Like my first thought it was really that is th- that name is stupid. Too long. It's too long. Too much. It's just too much. It's just oof, y'all. Anyway, it's extra, which makes me think that Fernando's definitely going to be driving for them now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you never know. They might have a, well, no, probably not. The no. third car for the 500, but hell, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, I'll tell you, the, the most disappointing part about this news is that it's not going to add any additional drivers to the field. Uh, it's not adding an additional team. Like, no, it's just. At the end of the day. It's, yeah, it's zero gain. Like, zero sum. It's a name change. Yeah, it's just a name change. It's a, it's a partnership. Mm-hmm. So, yes, but um, they are going from Honda to Chevy, which is kind of a BFD. Yeah, that uh, threw everything topsy-turvy. Sure did, and because Schmidt-Peterson had another year with their contract with Honda, and mm-hmm. Honda told them in no uncertain terms that there wasn't a chance in hell that they were going to work with McLaren. Um, yeah, it and- was interesting to see that like both Andretti Autosport and like Aero Schmidt-Peterson tried to rehab that relationship, and Honda was like, no. <laughs> yeah, they were like, nope, not today, nope. not tomorrow, never. You tell McLaren they can get fucked. <laughs> they're dead to us. <laughs> yeah, they they're like, would, them in hell. would you work with McLaren? Who? I don't know Who? anybody by that name. Who? Who's McLaren? McLaren? They, they don't exist to me anymore. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, two different teams really tried, and, and car teams know how to wine and dine people, and, yeah, couldn't pull it off. So, Honda's... Holding a grudge. Yeah. Which is something that's respected by this podcast. (laughs) It really is. It really is. Like, I get it. You don't like them. I mean... That's all you have to say. Nope. I don't like them. Nope. Okay. I don't like them. I won't ask again. Cool. Uh, I mean, I'll ask once, but then I'll be like, all right, cool. Cool. You sure? Okay. Uh, So, yeah. So, two-car Chevy-powered team... We didn't get any drivers. We didn't really gain a team. Um, but they're changing engines, which just has all kinds of ramifications, implications, speculations, rumors, hot takes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. the first one that's near and near to our heart is Meyer Shank Racing. They have the tech partnership with Aero Schmidt Peterson right now. Mm-hmm. And I don't believe they, and because of their um, sponsorship with Auto Nation, they're Honda. So they are Honda. And I mean, they're like they're Honda through that sponsorship. So they're they're it's done after 2019. Yeah. So what is it? Rumors, big rumors, as far as if there will be a tech partnership. So you know, there's actually kind of like two scenarios. Maybe they don't need a tech partnership anymore. I don't know. It's You're possible. related to the Meyer. Could you find that out for us, please, Meyer? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mike Shank said that. He said I can just say I'm Come family. On so he said that's a thing. It's okay. Um, yeah, I'll find out. I'll ask my cousins. Cool. I'll ask my kin. <laughs> so yeah, maybe. I mean, one possibility. I don't know. There's no more need for a tech partnership. Or the two kind of team names that's been bandied about is Andretti Autosport or Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing. Yes. Um, because so, uh, RLL came out and said that they're in a place where they might be able to field a third car next year, and so if they can field a third car on their own, they definitely can do a tech partnership. 
Um, yeah. And so they might do that in lieu of building a third car, but it, it might be a strong enough partnership that Jack Harvey has a full season. Well, that's what they were pushing for. Yeah, they were pushing for that anyway at MSR. They yeah. wanted to do a full season, and so that RLL deal might might really work in their favor if RL wants to run an extra car. Yeah, because I think doing a tech partnership would save the team a little money, maybe allow, you know, so, I don't know, it's, that's a smart business idea. I'm just putting that out there. It is. Hall. it is. I think that makes the most sense. Um, Andretti? I mean, it's possible, but there are, they already have a tech partnership with Harding. Um, well, there's, see, there's rumors that they're going to add a fifth car. Yeah. I, I am, I, for, yeah, so the, the rumor of the fifth car was for Herda. I mean, at that point, I feel like maybe instead of adding more drivers, you should just be more choosy about your current drivers. <laughs> because all we're doing now, it's like when, when you're like best out of three, and then you lose two, and you're like, okay, best out of five. Okay, best out of seven. Uh, like, at some point, yeah, you're going to have good results because you've got a third of the fucking field on your team. At this point, we are doing best out of five with Andretti Autosport if they add this fifth car. I mean, I just feel like I, I feel like that where they're just throwing a bunch of shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. Mm-hmm. Also, what, what? Yeah, no, I just I just feel like just focus on your current program and better your current drivers before you try adding a fifth car into this. I don't know. You've got I mean, one driver who's great all of the time. Yes. You've got one who's really good. <laughs> Most of the time, but has weird bad luck. Yes. You've Beach. got, you know, a oh, middle... Poor Zach Beach. Poor Zach Beach, who's Who? going to be everybody's favorite two-seater driver because he's so much fun. Um, and then, and and then, then you've the got legacy Mark. driver. Yep. <laughs> and then you've got the legacy driver, um, who is, you know, solid mid-pack, but also has a lot of DNFs from weird bad luck. So... It's like, I feel like you've got more than enough to focus on Andretti Autosport. I know, but it's, like, in one of the articles I read, they were all but saying, like, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, we really want to keep, we want to we want to have Colt Herta with us, and I'm like, um, and I don't think, aside from Rossi, anybody else's contract in Andretti Autosport is up. You know what? Mm-hmm. I actually got info on contracts and things, and I wrote it down, and let's see. Beach, Beach still has a year, I think. Beach has a year. Herda only had one year. Um, yeah, Herda's was a year, and so that's kind of the big push, is if you don't get him now, he might get snapped up by another team. Exactly. Mm, damn it, I left it in the car. Um, but, yeah, this is actually um, Matt Lace last year on his contract. That makes sense. I, it, I think it's also Tony's, then. Um, I thought they but signed Tony for signed amount. for two with a third year option, and Tony's not going okay. anywhere. Well, yeah, but it's but, still technically. Normal. But yeah, it was it the yeah that contract was written two with a third year option. Um, okay, and then actually, yeah, RHR has one year left. Uh, uh-huh. Dale Coyne only signs contracts for one year at a time. I mean. There's a thought process behind that, but I, I don't know. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, but yeah, yeah. so Seabass and Ferrucci, although Both have yeah, Seabass C- is going to resign with Dale Coyne. Like they're yeah, yeah they're, they're, not, okay. they're not breaking up. They're not breaking up the band. Um, no. But Ferrucci, you might as well just sign that one indefinitely. I mean, right. Although I enjoy that both of them, because I feel like it fits both of their personalities. Like Dale Coyne's like, you know, you put up results or you're you're out, and Seabass is like, well. You, you give me the car I want, or I'll find somebody else who will. Like, I feel like yeah. it, it works for both of them. For those two, yes, I enjoy that very much, though, because I can see both of them just looking at each other across the table when they're signing it, just maintaining eye contact the whole time. Like, I mean, they both seem like habits. the kind of people that would, you know, give an ultimatum and would never back down. Yeah, my kind of people. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, I'm, I'm here for that, just the one year at a time. I like it. I like what it says. So, but yeah, um, no word on if Ferrucci will be re-signed or if there's anybody else looking at Ferrucci. Rosenquist is staying with Ganassi. I think he's yes. got a two-year deal anyway. I think he's got another year, but. I thought last year he, or this year he re-signed. Oh, okay, was then it wasn't year. he re-signed. That's right. It was just a one-year, yep. but he re-signed. They're very happy with him. Yes. Um, so, but yeah, Herta just did the one year at Harding, so it'll be very interesting. Well, I mean... So, 
if you think about her. Oh, Spencer Pickett is up after this year. Oh, Spencer. Yeah. Where is he going? That, I was like, there was another one that was really, that Maybe I was surprised Spencer by. Spencer will go to A.J. Foyt Racing. <sighs> oh. Aww. I don't want you to do that, Spencer. I want you to stay with Ed Carpenter Racing. I'll be curious to see if A.J. Foyt Racing re-signs Matt Laced. I would be, too. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. You know what? This is so great that we're thinking about this right as we're about ready to go to Pocono, because we're going to spend, like, hours with the Kurt talking about this now. Oh, yeah, we are. We're going to talk about all the implications and what he thinks Foyt Racing is going to do, what he thinks they should do. <laughs> It'll be a whole thing. Can we just record it as a bonus episode? I think so. Okay. And they make it mandatory listening for any pain to a rookies next year. They have to listen to it in the car on the way. I like this idea. I do, too. I feel like the director will also like this. Yes. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so I don't know where we went on that. We went We went around the Maypole a couple of times. Yep. No, we... Uh, we went, we went down the rabbit hole. Okay, so yeah. So Herta could be an Andretti in a fifth car, and so the... The, like, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. It was basically, like, we would always have a fifth car for Colton Herta. Well, and, and it being his, you know, he's, I get it. There's an impetus to sign him. Yeah. Because what if he, he gets picked up for a three-year contract and then whole thing. But it does make me curious. This was a, I mean, it's just a thought. I have nothing to base it on. It was just as I was, like, reading through everything and just, staring at a diagram of who was going where and who was switched to what and, you know, where everybody's home addresses were. Um, naturally. Is, naturally, yeah. So if Herta leaves Harding Steinberg Racing going to Andretti Autosport, and if Andretti Autosport's name being bandied about as the technical partnership for Meyer Shank Racing, what the hell might be going on with Harding Steinberg Racing? Uh, that's, that's the million-dollar question. Uh, or the multi-million dollar question, because I'll tell you what, nobody was more upset about this McLaren announcement than Mike Harding, <laughs> because he just switched to Honda. I guarantee that he saw that news and just said, God damn it, that McLaren money could be ours. We could have had the McLaren money. Uh, <laughs> so, well, and what's, because the thing is, what the hell will become of Harding Steinbrenner Racing, because... George Steinbrenner IV partnered with Harding because he supported Herta. his friend. Yeah. Herta. And so if Herta's not at Harding anymore, I would bet that the Steinbrenner money will not be at Harding anymore. I mean, also, I don't know how long their particular contract was for, but it may have just been one year since Colton only got a one year. Well, I'm also going to just point out, and I saw this article, and I have not yet read it, but somebody wrote an article that said, like, does under contract mean anything in any car? And I just laughed in legal ease for a while. Um, <laughs> but I think if anybody can buy out a contract, I'm going to put uh, my bet on, I don't know, Steinbrenners. <laughs> I mean, that's like getting into a, a land war in Asia. It's not even fair. <laughs> Wait, why? Why? Why yeah. start? So, no, it's, it's, just it's, I had. it's like, not uh, even fair. Because, if Herta leaves, judging by what happened earlier this season with Mike Harding and another driver's contract, who in the world, like what driver out there thinks that's a smart investment to get into a business relationship with Mike Harding? I mean, there have been enough things that have happened to drivers that were at Harding that I, I think that I would be very tentative to enter into a relationship with them if I were a driver. To be a damn ironclad contract, I'll tell you that much. Everybody, please call me. Uh, I am yeah. licensed in the state of Indiana. Yeah, I mean, my I'll thought would be like, right away. okay, loyalty doesn't mean anything. We're not doing handshake deals and, oh, you know, oh. just things that we agree to. Everything is getting put in writing. Yeah. I'm not calling you. We're sending emails back and forth. Like, that's the level of lockdown it would be. Yeah, or if I'm calling you, I'm recording it because Indiana is a one-party state. I mean, it's a one party, but you can't enter it into evidence anyway. Can you not? You can't, no. Oh. Well, police officers can. Okay, that's where I got confused on that. It's kind of different with them. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. See, I'm like, yeah, you can. Then I'm like, no, I can't. Yeah, I'm a see, civilian. They're never different. It's okay. Okay, yeah. Yep. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, so it'll be very interesting. Um 
And who the hell is going to drive for AMRSP? Hinch. So, yes, Hinch um, has... He put out a statement that he had not talked to Honda yet, but that he was still, you know, remaining on AMRSP. Um, we did get some questions on our Facebook page about this, and so to everybody who has not heard it yet, because they asked about, you know, what about the deal that, you know, Schmidt-Peterson had with Wickens, that they've got a car for him whenever he comes back, and McLaren has said that they, they intend to honor that as well. I just want to know who thought that they would say no. Like, really? Exactly. I mean... Who thought that they would be like, nope, you're on your own, kid. Stay nope. Well. I mean, it is an F1 team, but still. No, they were in IndyCar for a while, but that's just, that's just... Yeah. God, they I mean, they also, like... They're not like animals. Kick puppies for fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you'd have to be a, just, just a horrible person. Just heartless. Yeah. Like, you don't get to pass go and collect $200. You go straight to hell when you die because you have no mm-hmm. soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyhow. So, yeah, so, so that, that deal is still good for Wiccans. But, yeah, so Hinch is yeah. one of them. Um, other names have been We're thrown around. Sure. I mean... Well, yeah. It, it hasn't been announced. With, it's not, but he put everything out. But here's the thing. I mean, I'm sure there's a sponsorship contract that he has with Canadian Honda or Honda of Canada. I don't quite yeah, know what it is, so I like to call it Canadian Honda. I, I enjoy Canadian Honda. Um, so, yeah, he's got that's, that, but he's individually sponsored by them. That's what I mean, yes. So, yeah, so, so he's got that, and then he's got a Honda contract here in the States, too. Well, I'm thinking more of the personal sponsorship contract is going to be a lot harder to break. Mm. Um, I mean, I'm going to just throw that out here. Uh, we are now getting to talk about breaches of contract, and I am just, I am so excited. I know. You have such ladywood for all of this. Nobody likes contracts when you're in law school and you're like, this is so boring. And all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute. There are like 20 contracts that potentially just got violated. Oh, yeah. It's it's going to be quite quite the, the I mean it's it's gonna, it's gonna be a whole production just, the I, whole I, thing it's it's crazy. Dear everybody involved legally, just send me the briefs. Like I, after you file it, just shoot it to your girl. Okay, I just want to read them. I mean, I'm not even an attorney, and I love reading good court documents. So you can send them to me too. You can send I them. Just, yeah. It'll be a lot more fun than reading, like, dry, regular contracts. It'll be like, oh, my God, I know that person. I met them. Right. Uh. Uh, so, yeah, we think Hinch is in. Names that have been bandied about are um, award potentially. Yeah, Patricio Award, which I would love for him to have a full-time ride next season. He really That would be great. Yeah, he, uh, he got the short end of the stick this year for sure. He did. Um, it's sounding like... Uh, Marcus Erickson's not coming back. So he only had a one-year contract, and his contract is up this year. Uh huh. Um, okay. And so, yeah, and it it does not appear it his name well. was not thrown around at any point that he no. was going to be there. Um, and he tweeted something about you know like you know the new partnership and how it's exciting, but it was also kind of you know. He alluded to, like, you know, no matter where I am next year. <laughs> I was like, I feel like that's, yeah, the, the writing must be pretty hard on the wall. Uh, I mean, but he also, like, I mean, he's done okay, but he just he hasn't has had a, done okay. But he hadn't, done, he hadn't had a great season. My fantasy was, points show it. I, I can't say anything. Well, hey, at least, at least yours is podiumed. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. And he uh, finishes every week. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm like batting 500 on that. <laughs> so, yeah, um, awards name. I mean, I feel like a lot of names probably are open for that spot. It just would depend on who all can, A, raise their own personal capital and B, impress the um, Aero McLaren Racing SP yeah. people. Well, and... Um this actually makes a lot of sense as to why why we had some some people testing for Aero, some Indy Lights mm-hmm. drivers. Um, or no, Aero had um, they didn't have any. No, they, had, like, had they had the Emsa people, drivers. Uh, well, that and but, at the last Formula One race, there were Aero people in the yeah. McLaren garage. Yeah, there were. Um, so, so yeah, very interesting. But I mean, also there's there's some. 
powerhouse drivers in Indy Lights right now, and we don't want to overlook mm -hmm. them. Um, oh, Oliver yeah. Skew is killing it this year. Um, and Ollie and Rena VK both tested, so... They did. They did. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's anybody's guess who's going to be on that team next year. Uh -huh. Very interesting. Probably. I mean, save money would be that Hinch somehow is going to have some contract issues, um, but he will still be with Arrow. McLaren he, Racing SP. God, I'm going to have to get this in my head by, like, January, don't I? Ugh. I think we'll just call it Arrow. Yeah, that's, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, man, I think I have different car deliveries. Oh, I can't handle another blue and orange car. Ugh, it's papaya. Excuse you. <laughs> My bad. Also, no. I just want to say this. <laughs> and, and this, this <laughs> is quite the hot take. I don't give a shit. Um, if I were a team that got bumped from the Indy 500 and looked like ass clowns. Yes. I don't know that I would partner with a team that got bumped two years ago and almost got bumped this year. To be fair, only one of their drivers got bumped less than two years ago. That's true. But I'm just <laughs> saying. I know. No, I know. I just, like... This is the team that you're going to, like, put all your eggs in their basket? Because I don't know. You, you're probably, I don't know that you're going to have a better May. Yeah, I think it, history might repeat itself. I'm just, and I love, oh I love Schmidt Peterson Motorsports. I really do. But I, know. I just want to, like, point out the obvious here that it doesn't seem like the smart choice. <laughs> I think. Mean Somebody right now listening is going to scream as soon as I ask this question. Just start screaming the answer. But is Schmidt Peterson, are they based? They're not based in Canon because their garages and everything are here, so never mind. Yeah, no, they're based here. Um, I was going to make another Imperial Symmetric joke, but. Uh, somebody, it's not as good. somebody tweeted oh, a reply that. to the announcement, and it was just a picture of Metric to Imperial conversions. It was great. Oh, my God. I, I literally almost pissed my pants because I was laughing so hard. I was like, the level of shade here. I was like, I am here for this. Uh, it was perfection. <laughs> it was fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, that really that tickled me. You know? It's just... <laughs> oh, so, so, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I, uh, I mean, I'm excited to have McLaren be back a part of IndyCar. I think that... I think that this may definitely affected their decision on how they were going to do try and do a full time season, and I think that it it became apparent to them that you know coming in and doing their own thing, they probably should partner with somebody first. Um, a little bit. So, so yeah. So I think I mean I think that it was a smart choice on their part to partner with somebody. I just wish that they were adding a third car as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with all of those things, and really at the end of the day, all we truly and honestly know, and there's been a lot of wild speculation on our part, is that uh, no new teams, just one team switching from Honda to Chevy, still the same amount of cars, um, new name, and we kind of figure one of the two drivers, but other than that, eh. and Meyer Shank Racing is now figuring out what they're going to do next year. It's true. Well, and also, I mean, Hinch might be, like, between a rock and a hard place if Honda won't let him out of his contract. I mean, typically at this point, they will let you out of your contract, but you won't have to pony up some money. That's what I'm saying. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. And so, it'll be, how much does how, Errol McLaren want him? Exactly. And he's not had the best season either, so he's not exactly coming from a great negotiating standpoint of, hey, you should spend all this money to buy me out of my contract so I keep racing for you. I mean, he's one of the darlings of the paddock, but that's because he's very personal. Well, but as yeah, far, I mean, every, he's top I, yeah. ten, right? He's top ten. Yeah, but that's that's a lot of money to break a contract like that. Maybe even two. It is. So it is. It's interesting. I thought it was going to be a quiet, silly season after the Rossi announcement shut. You know, this speculation about that and and ready out of sport. I was wrong. You thought wrong. I did. Oh, no. I was like, well, 
didn't see this coming. Right. Uh, all right. Well, let's jump on in to the, uh, the Pocono preview. Yeah, because we're leaving, not on a jet plane, but in the van. In the van. Day. In the van, Gina. All right. I'm going to let you talk about uh, the track while I refill my wine real quick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is the most on brand for our podcast ever. So it's the Pocono Raceway in Pennsylvania, Long Pond, Pennsylvania, not Pocono, Pennsylvania. So it's a three turn super speedway. It is not a tri oval. It is, darn it, a, or it's not a, Oh, it, it's not a trial. It's a triangle. Ugh. Too many T words today. So the interesting thing about this track is there are three turns, and you can probably get your car set up for two out of the three turns, but you will never get it set up for all three turns. Which is the the tricky part about this triangle. Ah, tricky. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if you're playing the game at home, that's a drink. That's um, drink. That's two drinks for tricky. It is two One drinks drink for, for triangle. But two for tricky. Uh, but, but yeah, so that, I mean, that's what everybody says is that you can only set your car up for two out of the three turns. So there's always going to be one turn that your car is not set up well for, and you just have to manhandle the shit out of it. A wing and a prayer. Yep. So, hello. I don't know why my dog decided to climb on top of me at this point, but okay. Why not? It's apparently her nap time. Um, my bad. (laughs) So the track, what I always have enjoyed about talking about this track is that each of the turns are modeled after another um racetrack so it's kind of fun it is it's kind of like a nice homage to other tracks and so the, it is the okay. only track that is truly still family owned yes which is very cool it is i mean it's it's kind of nice it's one of those like fun little tidbits it is so uh turn one 14 degree banking it's modeled after the trenton speedway Turn two, our favorite turn. You know uh, it. Eight, eight, nine degree banking. It is modeled after the IMS. Aw. Aw. Home. And then turn three is six degrees, and it's modeled after the Milwaukee Mile. Also, um, turn two is over the tunnel, and as we have learned, the tunnel makes the turn a little bumpy because the concrete and whatnot settles a bit wonky there. Yeah, so that is a fun fact that we learned, that every oval has um, has problems with being bumpy because of the tunnels to get to the infield. When everything settles, obviously the ground moves, but the cement of the tunnel doesn't, so it creates a bump, which means that our track actually is probably one of the bumpiest because there's so many damn tunnels. Uh, yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me. And also, I, there was when we first learned it, I was like, but why are there I was like, you can't. I mean, I guess suppose you could put like a weird bridge. I mean, they do it at Long Beach everywhere over an oval. But yeah, I mean, no, just talk to Long weird. Beach. I'm sure they. I'm sure they'd be happy to assemble. I don't know, like twenty four fucking flights of <laughs> stairs for you to get over. <laughs> they can do it real fast. There were so many stairs at that fucking track. <laughs> Every now and then, I just remember waking up to you. From the other room in the Airbnb, yelling out loud, we went up 20 flights, or however many flights of stairs we went up, just you yelling that out loud. Well, yeah, because you text me a screenshot of your fitness app, and I just, I wake up and I see this, and I just go, 24 flights? Are you fucking serious? (laughs) Oh, it was the best way to wake up. I mean, I was late, but at that point, I was like, good morning. When I was like, oh, text for Molly. I wonder what this is going to be. <laughs> Surprise. You exercise. Right? I'm like, maybe she went out and got coffee and donuts. Like, and then, no. 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 <laughs> oh, so, anyhow. But, yeah, no, I'm sure the people at Long Beach could uh, could assemble that. But, but yeah, it's like you have to have a tunnel because you got to get to the infield. So. you got to get the infield. And, well, and, you, and, you, and you can't drive over, <laughs> over the bridge, you know. You can <laughs> walk, know. but, yeah. Well, then the other... The other part of me was like, they don't need to, you can just walk right across. And I was like, well, not in the middle of the race. Helliger, you can't do that in the middle of the race. No, you can't. So, these were just thoughts I had at one point. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. But, but yeah, so there's, turn two has a bump, which fits because there's, I think, five or six tunnels to into our infield at IMS. <laughs> there 
there are. <laughs> yeah, there are quite a few. Yeah, there are. Oh, so, the race is sponsored by the ABC Supply Company, so it is the ABC Supply 500. It is the second 500-mile race on the schedule. <laughs> and the 500 for this race means 500 miles. Sure does. It is, just like our track, I know you mentioned it, but 2.5 miles, so it is 200 laps. I don't think I had yet. So oh, okay. So, yeah, so, I, and this is one of the reasons that I really enjoy Pocono is, you know, it's it's another 500-mile race. Our home race is a 500-mile race. And it's another two-and-a-half-mile oval or triangle. Um, but it's a two-and-a-half-mile <laughs> track, and which, you know, which is a – it's a super speedway. It's a huge track for an oval. And yeah. that's just – that's the kind of ovals that I love the most. I mean, the shorter, shorter ovals, they're exciting. There's good racing. I mean, there's, there's, you know, there's pros to those. But yeah. I, I just love a big super speedway track. No, it, it just – it's great. And, and this one with the front stretch being so wide, you can get, you know, like seven darn cars in a row there. And you're just oh like, my gosh. Oh. Yeah, they go so many wide on the front straight on the front straight because it is. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculously wide. And something that I love about Pocono that we don't have at our track is that you can if you're up high in the grandstands, you can pretty much see the entire track. Um, yeah. The way ours is, you know, we've, we've got buildings and structures and things. We've got a lot more infrastructure on the infield um, of we ours. We've got a golf course. Yeah, three holes of a golf course. We've got a damn <laughs> Hall of Fame museum. There's a pagoda that is also an FAA air traffic control tower. I mean, there's a lot happening in the infield. Um, and so you it's cannot, I mean, you, so there are, there are a few sweet spots that you can see a good part of the track. Like, uh -huh. the majority of it, but there's nowhere, really, that you can see the entire thing unless you're standing on top of the pagoda and you can do a 360 view. Right. And, but what I enjoy about Pocono is that they don't have, that. that's not, that's not a problem there. Um, you can no. pretty much see the entire track if you're up high, and it's awesome. And yeah, I think when we were on the spotter stand last year, I, you could see the whole thing. Yeah, you could, and it's, it was super freaking cool. I mean, just yeah, super was. cool. So if you are if you were thinking about going to Pocono and you're on the fence, go. 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 Because they Let's also, go. this is, their, they only signed a one-year contract. Um, so I hope oh. that we see Pocono next year. But we may not. So if you're if you're on the fence, go. It is well worth the money. Yeah. Uh, but yes. So most wins as a driver. No <laughs> surprise here. AJ Foyt. He has four yep. wins there as well, by the way. So he has four yep. of the Indy 500 and four at Pocono. Does he? He should have like a super super special brick somewhere. I mean, I, I feel like that makes him the super goat. Like, yeah, the super speedway goat. Oh my god. Oh, that's that's it. Super speedway that's goat. It. He's a super speedway goat. Um, which you know what I don't know. I don't know if any of those were in the same year because I had this random thought and then I just didn't want to do the work to look it up. So if anybody knows this answer, let me know. Has anybody uh, ever won the Indy 500 and the Pocono 500 in the same year? I wonder if the Kurt knows about Foyt, at least. I mean, I, I'm sure the the Kurt would know about Foyt. Yes. I don't know about other people. But, uh, but yeah. It, I just thought, I just had that thought. And I was like, that's interesting. I wonder. Well, because it, it used to be part of the IndyCar, like, USAC Triple Crown. It was this, IMS. Milwaukee Mile? Uh, no, because that's not a, it was also, like, a, a long race. Or I'm MIS, maybe? Michigan? Uh, it might have been MIS. I want to say it was, actually. Yeah, I think For it was. For some reason, I thought Cali, and I was like, that's not right. No. Yeah. But, yeah, so, so I, it's interesting. But, yeah, so if anybody knows the answer to that, let us know. Let us know. Uh, most, most wins as a team? Dansky. RP, baby. <laughs> uh, no surprises there, either. And also, guess who has the fastest lap record? The chosen Juan. Well, there could only be. Juan. Juan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Juan Pablo Montoya, 2014 qualifying, speed of 223.920 miles per hour. That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. quick. That's pretty quick, rolling off. Pretty um, damn quick. 2016, yeah. everybody's Aww. favorite unpredictable Russian, Mikhail Aloshin, won the pole. Sometimes, sometimes I miss Mikhail Aloshin. I do, because he just added in... Uh, a piece of just unpredictability. He was just yes. a wild card always. He either killed it or stuffed it. Um, that was, that's it. He was the epitome of win it or wreck it. Yeah. I mean, I was like, here for his passion. Everybody else tries for it, though. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, yeah, so he won the poll. Uh, podium shaped up in 2016 to be Will Power, Michaela Lotion, and Ryan Hunter Ray. Yep. And then in 2017, Takuma Sato got the poll. Yeah, he did. Uh, and the podium then went Will Power, Joseph Newgarden, and Alexander Rossi in third. There you go. Yeah. 2018, uh, the poll yep. went to Will Power. Mm-hmm. Because he is a machine when it comes to qualifying. Especially on ovals. Oh, especially on ovals. Um, I believe Faux Will calls him the real oval specialist. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say I haven't heard Carpenter's name once in this. Uh, so, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so, <laughs> right. So the poll went to Will Power. Uh, the podium was Alexander Rossi, Will Power, Scott Dixon. Yeah. I mean... Quite, quite the powerhouse podium right there. Yeah, quite the year last year. It was quite the year last year. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. I I will be so happy to not see a wreck this year. Yeah, I, I don't know how or who or what we need to do, but maybe let's oof, let's let's give everybody a poke and a year off, guys. Maybe we attend the IndyCar Ministry Mass on Sunday morning. Maybe that'll make a difference. Yeah. I mean, maybe, at this I point. Mean, it's it in the infield, so it doesn't require me doing the stairs. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's, it's in the infield. I'm glad that you looked this up. I did. Well, I always look at it, because I always kind of want to go. It just doesn't work out. I know. Every single time, we're like, we should go, and then Sunday rolls around, and well, we Well, frankly, we're sleep-deprived and a little hungover, which I know is how most of us go to church normally, but... Sometimes I'm just not leaving the campsite. I'm just not ready to brush my teeth yet and have sometimes the body of Christ. Like, I'm just not ready for it. No, sometimes it's not great to drink the blood of Christ and start to kind of dry heave a little bit. You know, they, they do not look kindly upon that. Mm. You know, that only happened to me one time. It was when I had the job working at a church, and I was so hungover. Um, and, yeah, you know, I took a drink of the wine, and I was like, oh, Mm-mm. I made a bad choice. I'm just going to say, throwing up the blood of Christ, that is straight to hell. I mean, that gets you an exorcism. You get fast-tracked to an exorcism. (laughs) Uh, I want there not to be, like, trackside mass and trackside exorcism. Right? Mm. Yeah, no, I was was lucky that it it stayed down because, well... Yeah, that doesn't end well. I had to go back and, and play the piano, so... Well, I don't know if Episcopal churches do exorcisms. Yeah, yeah, they probably don't. Eh, yeah, probably not. Probably not. You just talk about your feelings for a minute, and it's fine. Well, you know what? Knowing Episcopalians, I'm sure there's an Episcopal priest somewhere that does them just because Episcopalians do what they want. because <laughs> he just wants to. Just because he can. Um, yeah. Or she. Or she, yeah. Or, I don't know, I think it's just he or she right now in the Episcopal church. I don't know their stance on um, gender nonconformity. Anyway, this has been liturgy. liturgy. Yes, um, actually, I do know their stance. They're they're very supportive of. Oh, okay. Of all of it, yeah. Cool. I mean, I would expect didn't nothing hear less. Much. Right? Yeah, would expect nothing less, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so anyhow so yeah so last year's race which yeah obviously Wiccans crash we're not gonna yeah. we're not gonna deep dive into that we all we all saw it some of us saw it live. We all know that he's doing great, and we and continue to hope great. good things for him. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a good time to remind everybody, if you haven't sent Wiccans a card in a while, send him a card, man. Because <laughs> he's about the to thing, get married. Send him a card. Like, he's about to get married. It's coming up on one year. He's made huge improvements. But, you know, his life is still very different, and it still is hard. And so any encouragement, you know, for him and or Carly, um, because it's hard. You know, I'm sure it's been hard for her, too. Um, I don't oh, know. That yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying this, you know, like I've personally spoken to them. Um but, you know, as a nurse, I know how hard it can be on patients and their families. Um, so, yeah, send him a card because, you know, he said many times that he gets them all, he reads them all, and he really appreciates them. So let him know yeah. that you appreciate him busting his ass and, and working as hard as he is. I like it. Good idea. Yeah. I mean, he's just such a nice guy. Like That, too. I mean, the man always has a smile on his face, and that's just great. He really does. In fact, I have a, an aunt who has had just, like, multiple surgeries and whatnot, so she actually is kind of having to relearn how to walk, and I was like, okay, what I'm going to need you to do is look up 
Wiggy's Instagram because the man has been like busting his hump and she just stared at me and I was like it's fine you're like no no trust me just but it's cool he's it's it's inspirational everybody it is which so. if you do see Wiggins do not do Don't not pat him. him on the back just wave hey man or yep. bro head nod right so funny story I somehow got compression fractures in two of my vertebrae in my back, like right between my shoulder blades. And so I also prefer for people to not touch me um, or pat my back because it hurts like hell and it makes me want to punch you in the throat. Um, And what I've learned since I broke those bones is you have no idea how many people touch you on your upper back until you, until that area is injured. Like when, you know, when Wiccans put out his thing, you know, six months ago, or a little less than that, you know, and was like, hey, I, I love all sport, but can everybody please stop touching my back? It hurts, da 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 I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, I can see that a lot of people coming up. No, it's not even just people coming up. Like, I've realized now, I mean, at work, I had five people pat me on my back in one day. I'm like, I don't even know these people that well. Why are they touching me? Everybody that hugs wants to do, like, a pat. And um, so I have a whole new level of I understand why that's not cool. Mm-hmm. So... So, yeah, so please don't touch his back. And for that matter, please don't pat mine. Just wait. You can give me a hug. You can give me a hug. Just don't do the, like, where you bring it in and then you do, like, the, the couple of hard pats like, to let pat, me know pat, you pat, mean pat, it. Yeah. Yeah, because that's, no, it, it's not fun for me. Uh, oh. Well, what are you excited about for this race? I think every time we talk about this race, I just remember the starts where they're, like, seven wide, and it just, I love it. The starts and restarts at this race are unreal. Absolutely. Just wicked to stare at. You're like, how is this? How is this happening in front of me? So that's yeah. always what I love about this race. I I agree with you. I mean, it's just it's out of control. You know, I mean, I depending. Actually, this is one of those races where I kind of hope that Rossi shits the bed in qualifying, so that we can watch him just cut through the field. And on every start and restart, just fucking own, like, six cars at a time. I like it. I mean, I don't wish bad things upon Rossi, but this is a place where, again, like, Abby's perfect day in May, 42 cars, put Dixon and Rossi in the back. And let the magic happen. Let the magic happen. Um, So. I get it. Yeah, I'm like, I mean, I hope he does well for you because I know how much you love him and I, I I don't dislike him. Um, but, but yeah, I enjoy seeing that. Yeah. What about you? Um, you know, this weekend is just so full that it's, it's all, it's, it's become to me like the Indy 500 weekend, um, because Uh we camp with the pain tour. And so we have so many extracurricular activities, um, that the race itself is almost like the cherry on top. Like there's so much else awesome about that weekend because that's how I feel about the 8500. There's so many cool things that happen, and then the race is you know what you're super excited for, but it's like the cherry on top of this awesome Sunday of a weekend and ice cream Sunday. Um, yes. D A E. So um, yeah, as far as the race goes, I'm excited that the weather still looks pretty good. Doesn't look Gosh, like it's gonna be crazy yeah. hot, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be 62. So I'm excited to have kind of you know that almost perfect temperature for a super speedway um because i think with you know a little bit different weather that we might see some really fast qualifying speeds and that's probably the thing i'm most excited about because there are a few things i love more than qualifying on a super speedway it's just so much fun to watch because you're just like how can it be any faster and then the next person goes out and you're like i'm out i'm done like oh my god that Uh, that was even faster right now do, do they just do two laps at pocono uh, I feel like yes. I remember they just did two. I think we're the only place that does four. Yes, it's two. Okay. But but still. Yeah. That makes it real easy for the drinking game. You just pick a lap, and if you're wrong, you drink. Yeah, we should do that this one now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't believe that we introduced the pain tour that last year, but, uh, you know, Terry and Tom now know how to play since they came to Qualls at Indy, so... I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. It's, it's an easy game, yeah. I mean, if, if, if you have problems playing that game, well, I can't help you. You you probably shouldn't have a driver's license. <laughs> we make it pretty easy because, well, it's a uh, long day. 
drunks aren't good about at, at thinking about things. No. So, but yeah, I think qualifying, just because qualifying on Oval is just always exciting as hell. It is. So, so yeah. Well, we've already referenced our drinking game, so you want to jump into that? Yeah, we can. Pretty, pretty simple this time. Yep. Because, well. So, it, obviously, it, because it gets said 80,000 times. 80,000 times. It's on the damn track. It is. What turn four? Yes. What turn Did four? I? Yeah, it is on the track. It actually, we look at it every day because we camp in the infield of turn three, and it is mm-hmm. painted on the wall right there in turn three. What turn four? What turn four? So, um, if you hear them say it's the home of the Andretti drink, and also drink because technically the home of the Andretti would have been Nazareth Speedway, but it's you know, no longer a thing. R.I.P. Nazareth yeah. Speedway. Pour one out for your homie. Yep. Know. And as we said earlier, when you hear the word triangle, take a drink. Take two drinks if they say tricky. So basically, if they call it a tricky triangle, you take in two drinks. If it's just a triangle, one drink. See? The, yeah. amount, the amount of words. Yep. The amount of drinks. Yeah, it's not three for tricky triangle. It's just... I mean, you can take three, but... You can if you want we're to. We're just saying take two. But yeah. But if they say tricky at all, like, if they're just like, well, this is a tricky course, that's still two drinks. Oh, okay. I was keeping it more for just triangle. Oh, no, I think I think two drinks for every tricky, because they say it more than they typically do because it's called the tricky triangle. Well, that's true. That's true. Works for me. And just like I'm going to, I mean, one of the words for Portland and Laguna Seca is going to be Paul Tracy saying sausages. Yeah. Because that man loves saying that word. Yeah, that's true. Like, he just abuses it, so. But, yes, so. So triangle, tricky, what turn four, and home of the Andretti's. Home of the Andretti's. So don't uh, don't play with a real strong drink. No. That's that's our suggestion. And don't yeah. worry, you didn't have to write those down because they will be posted on all of our social media this week, as they always are. Molly does a fantastic job of that. Um, so you can find everything that you have ever wanted. From our website, <laughs> www.fastcarsfastgirls.com. You can listen to our podcast on there. You can subscribe. Um, we ask that you do. Download, subscribe, rate, review, share us with your friends and family. Um, from our website, again, fastcarsfastgirls.com, you can find all of our social media. We're on Instagram. Um, we're, we're on the gram. We're also we're on, on the Twitter. <laughs> right, for the gram. Um, we're the on gram. Twitter and Facebook. Um, and the we have Facebook. a Facebook. The Facebook. Yep. We're old <laughs> enough that when I joined Facebook, it was the Facebook. It was the Facebook, yeah. Yep. And only college kids could join. You had to have a .edu email address. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was there when you could only be friends with people from your own college. I know. You and I couldn't even be friends for like the first six months. We were like, the hell is this shit? I'm like, I'm an IEPUI. It's a division of any university. Nope. You can only be friends with people in your school. I... When they finally allowed you friends with everybody else, I friended every other Abby Meyer in the country that was on Facebook <laughs> at the time. I, okay. There were like 18 of us. And like, once I started doing it, they started doing it. And let me tell you, I, I think I'm still friends with like 16 of them to this day. Are you still friends with all of them? Um, a few of them deleted me, but I haven't removed any of them because I'm like, hey, what do I care? Um But yeah, it's really funny. Occasionally, I it doesn't happen as much anymore because most of them have gotten married. But it used to happen really frequently in college where I would get tagged in photos that were not me because they would type in you know their name Abby Abby Meyer, and for whatever reason I would pop up first and they would just click me. And so I I have been tagged in people's weddings. Um, (laughs) I've been tagged in so many random things, like not the bride at a wedding, but like a bridesmaid. Uh, Sure. But yeah, so so there's. That I enjoyed that for a little bit, uh, but uh, but yes. So the Facebook we're on we're on the Facebook or Facebook we're on the Facebook um, and we're on YouTube as well. Um, yes. So and you can just search Fast Cars Fast Girls on any of those, or we actually have links to them directly from the website. Um, you can sign up for our email list, which we only email you once a week because anything more than that is harassment. Mm-hmm. Um, also on our website is Molly's blog, and she does a fantastic job. puts out a couple blogs a week. Um, well. Um, not since the laptop died again. Not since the laptop died, but you know what? She's put out a lot of blogs, so you probably have to catch up to do. 
It's you can read some of those right now as you I can... try and figure out what to do with my life. Right. You can read some of those. It's fine. Um, but yeah, so, um, and then the email just goes out once a week. You can check out the yep. blogs. So it's kind of a one-stop shop. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Well, some things that we will be advertising on our social media are some of our weekend festivities. Yeah. So we've got we have quite a fun weekend plan for you race fans. Right. So first of all, we're there in person. First of all, you're welcome. Yeah, exactly. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, you're welcome. I'm sure if you have not been any of the races that we've done, the FCFG Unplugged event at, you wondered, are they going to do it at Pocono? We are. We are in fact going to do it at Pocono. We are. So yep, uh, we are doing it at every race that we camp at because it's just fun. Um, so that's going to be on Friday night from 6 to 8. And, again, it's just a low-key hangout with other race fans. And it's BYFC, which is bring your own chair slash cooler. So whatever you want to drink, bring it. If you're drinking alcohol, that's fine. Go ahead and bring it. If you're drinking water or Diet Coke, that's fine. But bring it. Because we're, pro- we're not providing any drinks for you. Um, we're not providing shit for you. <laughs> we're not providing shit except for our stellar personalities. Um, yeah, which is enough. Right? It should be. Uh, there might be some some race professionals that are there. If any drivers or teams show up, we do just ask that you please don't ask for autographs. We want this to just be kind of a hanging out, having a good time, um, and everybody kind of like a tailgate. So, And it is family friendly, and it will be at our campsite, which is the inside of Turn 3. So it's actually in the RV area, but we will have tents, and you'll see a big a big giant tent in that area. And a flamingo. And, and lots of flamingos. The flamingo will be on top of the van, so... Don't worry, you'll find us. Um, so that's yeah, that's the first night. That's Friday night, which we actually get there Thursday, which is so exciting. I know. And on Friday, um, Santino Ferrucci actually has a bunch of friends with really cool exotic cars. Is it Friday that this is happening? Well, I think they arrive Friday. It might be Saturday that they're actually doing like the laps. Okay. So I'm not exactly sure of the schedule, but Friday or Saturday. Santino Ferrucci has a bunch of friends. Well, there's vintage cars that will be there that weekend as well. That's true. And we met. Those are gonna be cool. We have to go and say hi to uh to those people we met in Iowa. At the Arby's. <laughs> at the Arby's at the truck stop. Who were also <laughs> at our hotel, by the way. That's how they recognized us. Because yeah. when I said, "Yeah, we're at the race," he was like, "No, I saw you in at at breakfast this morning." And all I thought was, "God, I looked." <laughs> we are just. I, I looked like I had been road hard and put up wet at breakfast because I just rolled out of bed and I was like, I just need to go get a waffle and a glass of milk. I'm so tired still. Um, but yeah, we have to say hi to them. But yeah, so there's vintage cars that are going to be doing cool stuff. And then there's going to be all these exotic cars that are going to come out and do cool things. So Also cool things. Also cool things. So lots of different I mean, kinds of cool cars. I'm excited. I First, we're going to have photos of all of the cars. Oh, we're getting pictures with all of the cars. Yes. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. All. All. All of the cars. <laughs> um, and then, well, do you want to... Another Friday or Saturday. And then Saturday evening, oh no, two years in a row, we're doing a live podcast. That's you, right, everyone. You know it. You know it. it. You didn't get enough of us last year, so we came back. So we are giving the people what they want, which yes. is us. Which is more fast cars, fast girls. So, so yeah, live show on Saturday night. It, it will be in Club Pocono. It is free. You just have to have a paddock pass because it is yes. in paddock. It's it a is paddock. on the infield, um, yeah. and it's basically the stands right by Pit Inn. Yes, and it starts. I actually don't remember the timing. So Club Pocono opens at five forty-five, and Thank then you. the Pocono Raceway podcast will start off the show at six o'clock. Um, and then at six twenty, they turn it over to your favorite, your favorite IndyCar podcasters, me and Molly. <laughs> what? what? Um, we so, yeah. uh, got some guests locked down, and uh, we're hoping to lock down one more. We are um, one, possibly two more. Um, but uh, but well, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but our confirmed guests, um, well, actually, we'll be talking to a couple members of the Pain Tour uh, because they are actually the hosts of this, and they started this whole thing a couple years ago. Um, and so we're going to talk to a couple members of the pain tour and, you know, kind of hear about them and what they're about and all that business. And then we are going to have Bob Jeffrey, 
who is Joseph Newgarden's spotter, and we're going to have Mike Ford, who is Simon Pagino's spotter. And so we're going to talk about talk talk with them about everything uh, because they are two of the most fascinating people. They've been racing their whole lives, and it's just really cool. They got so many stories. I thought we were having somebody from the track. Was that not us? Oh, we are. That's right. Okay. Um, we are also going to have somebody from Pocono's track. That's right. I forgot about that. Um, okay. I was like... There have been like 18 emails. Ew. There have been a lot of emails. You actually weren't even on all the emails. Um, what? There were just a few. I hate everybody. I know. Um, but but yes, Ben May, the president of Pocono Raceway, is going to be there. Is going to be um, talk to us for about five to ten minutes as well. Depending on his schedule, I think was. Today. Yeah, which I mean, it's a race weekend, so it's all, it's always it. schedule dependent. But it, it, it's a great lineup, and then we've got we've got a secret guest planned as well. So. That are lock it down soon. Um, well, I, I will. Get, I, I, have, I have information on that, but I will give it away if I say it right now. So I'll wait till we're done recording. Yeah, no worries. So it'll be fun. Uh, you know, no matter who our guests are, it's still going to be a great time. It's family friendly, so please don't worry about that. You know, anything we do public, uh, we'd like to keep it family friendly because, well, families should come to any car racing events. So exactly, and just because we're on this podcast doesn't mean that we will talk like that on stage in front of your kids. We won't. Um, we actually know how not to swear. We do. Despite what our parents think. Yes. I mean, yeah. Contrary to popular belief, we can lock it up. Um, <laughs> and we always love, we always want to encourage people bringing kids to racetracks um, because that's that's our future fans. So, yeah. So, yeah, so bring Absolutely. your kids. It's family friendly. Um, in fact, all the kids get to sit in the front row. Um, and a bonus this year for any of you IndyCar Nation members. I believe the experiences are still open. Actually, by the time this drops on Wednesday, they may not be. So you might have missed the boat. If you did, yep, yeah, TFB. If um, you did, it's still free. You just don't get it's, premium seating. Exactly. But, yeah, there was an experience that IndyCar Nation was giving away, which was 10-ish seats on the front row. So, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't look at the actual experience, but it's, yeah, right around there. <laughs> I like how we both just went. I'm like 10-ish. I didn't look. But, but yeah, but it is free. Again, all you have to have is a paddock pass. That's the only requirement because you it's you got to be in the paddock to get to the seating area. So And uh, show up. And show up. So so that's it. And um, the final practice is from 4 to 5 that day, and seating opens at 545. So that's plenty of time for you to, if you're camping, go back to your campsite, you know, eat a little dinner, change your clothes if you want to, come back. If you're not camping, well, it's only 45 minutes to kill. I'm sure you can entertain yourself taking pictures of things at the track. Yeah, like, the, you can just wander around the garages. Yeah. Easy. I mean, got there'll be a lot going on because everybody's coming in from practice, so there's going to be a lot of action in the garages. I mean, it's really, 45 minutes is going to go by pretty fast. Yeah, don't worry. So... I think it'll be good. I actually think that the uh, the earlier start time is going to keep some more people there. I think we might have a bigger crowd this year. I I am in agreement with that thought. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be good. It was really fun last year, so I'm I'm excited for this year. It was even with our audio killing out half like in the beginning. <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, uh, memories. Memories. I mean, but you know what? We rolled with it. Hey, it was fine. It was. We had a good time. It actually it actually made it really fun. It did. So it ended up being perfect because, well, Hinch and Rossi were late. So had we started on time, we would have had to fill a lot of dead air. What happened? That carb day last year, too. So. Yep. So we've just kind of come to expect it. Drivers are not ever on time. Yeah. That's yes. a fun fact. Fun fact. That's that's not a thing for them. No. All yeah. right. So, well, anything else that you want to add on? I think that's it. And it's going to be... Uh, going to be fun it's going to be a long weekend and then we turn it around to do it again so i'm yeah. cool with white flag in this oh wait we didn't make our picks oh shoot that's right we jumped into the drinking game shit yeah um this, i got why i have an order <laughs> i know well see you didn't list out like our names on all that so i just skipped right over it my laptop died it's dead i know no I know. it's all the way dead oh oh it's all oh yeah like it's done so it's done though it's okay. We saved if, everything. I wonder if you could take it somewhere if they could. I don't, I don't know. think so. Well. Anyway. But yeah. Well, if you got to move everything to the hard drive, then. Yeah, everything's saved, but it was like, uh, I usually do the notes on this, so I'm having to adjust. 
Oh yeah, because see, I do. I always use the mobile apps for everything, but you don't. You're you you love your laptop. I do love it. So, all right, let's get into choices. Okay, so you go first. So for first, I'm gonna curse them, and I'm gonna pick Rossi. Oh, I thought you were gonna say willpower. No. So you don't curse Rossi. Um, I I don't want willpower to win, so I kind of want to pick him just for funsies. <laughs> Okay. Um, but I'm not. <laughs> um, I'm going to pick, you know what, I'm going to pick Simon Pagano. Okay. Yeah. I'm not picking Dixon because I don't want him to win. <laughs> I mean, he might, it'd be a safe bet, but I don't want it to happen. I know, I know. Um, I will pick him for my top five, though. Okay. You're going to put Dixon for top five? Yeah. Ooh. Mm, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm not. You go ahead. I just thought I was like 500 miles with that elbow. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't know if it's his left or his right elbow. That makes a know. difference. I'm picking Ryan Hunter Ray for my top five. Ooh, bold move. I know. All of a sudden, I was like, I feel like it's Ryan's time. If he blows an engine <laughs> it's my before fault. lap 50, you have to finish whatever you're drinking. I will, I agree. And if I you're agree. near the end of a drink, you have to, like, open a new one and shotgun it. I mean. Yeah, no, I, I think these are the rules. You know what? Ryan had to raise my first out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, actually, that's not fair. We don't know who's driving for Carlin. Um. <laughs> you want me to just put Carlin second car for you? Uh, no, I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm going to stick with Ryan Hunter Ray. This is gonna Damn be like, it, I just X'd him out of my paper. <laughs> Oh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be all fun. All right, but you have to pick a top five. Yeah, I know. Um, all right, top five. Um, Rossi. Okay. I, for my top ten, I picked Hitch because, well, I feel like he's got to prove a little something right now. Either he has to prove something or he's got that I'm safe energy. So, either way, it's going to be a good showing. All right, my top ten. I'm gonna mm-hmm. pick Daddy. Oh, yeah. Old. I mean, it is an oval. It's a super speedway. Well, he is the oval specialist. He is. <laughs> so he is you- IRL for life. Both life. He has that tattooed. So. IRL or die. That's what he has. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still. I'm just there. I need a minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you picked Brian Hunter Ray for your first step, and I picked Zach Beach for my first step. <laughs> <laughs> I just, bless his heart, it's just not been a great year for him. Oh, you know, I, I considered Zach Beach. Um, he's either first out or his car's going to catch on fire, because that's not happened to him in a while. Oh, he's due. He's due for a fire, then. If that happens, I'm playing Fireball by Pitbull. Yes. He's yep. in my wheelhouse. I don't know if you knew that or not. <laughs> <laughs> Is Pitbull in your wheelhouse? Pitbull's in my wheelhouse. Oh. oh. You know what I thought the other day? Um, why don't we it's ever not- sing John Mellencamp? Because he's in our wheelhouse as well. It just, I always feel like singing Mellencamp, if you're a Hoosier at the 500 for karaoke, seems almost too on the nose. Except that all these people are from Pennsylvania, so they don't know how on the nose it is. I know, but I would know. Like, that's why I can't do it. I'm like, ah, oh, I would know. But right on the Scarecrow, it's like, ugh. Mm, I know. Maybe our intro maybe our intro song for the live show should be a Mellencamp song, because we're in Pennsylvania. Are we getting intro songs this year? Um, I'm sorry. Am I all of a sudden not a diva? <laughs> all right, fine. I mean, right. we had intro songs last year. Of course we're doing intro songs. Small town, first of all. Is any Mellencamp Obviously. Songs in it? Okay, I just okay. want to make that clear. No, it, there was no other choice. <laughs> okay. There was no other choice. So we have to white flag this. Yeah, okay, so that's it. That's a white flag. Small Town is our intro <laughs> song. Um, so just enjoy that if any of you listen to it on Facebook, well, Facebook will mute that music. Um, so that happens. <laughs> that happens. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see our friends. I'm excited that we both were smarter and took off Friday or took off Thursday and Monday this year. And Monday. That uh, that's the that's clutch. Um 
And yeah, it's just going to be a good time. I'm just, yeah, I'm just giddy about yep. it. The whole weekend is fantastic. Um, so yeah. And if you're close, come out to the track, man. It's going to be great. It's going to be a great, fantastic week. We can definitely come on out. Yep. Any what? What? Um, anything else you want to add for your white flag? Come to the live show. Yes, come to the live show on Saturday. There you go. <laughs> there so. you go. That's my white flag. All right. Excellent. Well, thanks for listening. You guys have a great week. Bye.